so I'm just going to speak it over everyone. I come before you, O oh holy God, giving my life as a sacrifice to you. My prayer is brought forth as an offering to revere your mighty reign. Who is this King of glory? Who goes before me? Who is behind me? And who surrounds me? In a white robe and purple garments, you are adorned. May your glory be revealed in this house. For nothing else matters but you, a wondrous king. And may my every sacrifice be fresh incense. So this morning, may our worship just be a fresh incense to the Lord. Wherever you're at, doesn't matter. Come as you are. No expectations. We're here to worship the King. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you that we get the opportunity to be here before you and worship you. To praise your name. To give you honor and glory. We come before you as a sacrifice. We bow before you. We bow before you, Lord, the King of glory. And we are open. Our hearts are open. Come and have your way in this place today, God. We thank you, Lord. people 
for your mercy reaches into the heavens and your truth into the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and let your glory be above all the earth. Yes. Yes. Be exalted, Lord, in the heavens. Be exalted, God. Can we just sing out a song of praise this morning? I just feel it so strong, like I, I just want to scream.
valley of the shadow of death. We will fear no evil, for you are with us. Your rod and staff, they comfort us. You prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. And our cup overflows. God, you give us enough. Surely goodness and love will follow us. You give us enough. You're my goodness. You're my constant. You're my first love. You're my future. Thank you, God, that you surround us. We are never alone. We are never alone. Fear has no room here. Fear has no room here. We welcome your presence, Lord. We welcome your presence in our lives. Because we belong to you.
I'll give you the nations. Jesus, we're asking this morning. Jesus, your children are asking. We're asking you to come. But we know you're here. But we're asking that you'll show up in mighty ways. Show up in mighty ways. Show your glory. Show your glory. Breathe upon us. Breathe upon us.
we are carrying before you, God. Lord, we lift him up in praise. We lift him up in worship. We lay them at your feet, God. There is only one who's worthy. We thank you, Lord. A garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. surrender to you, God. We happily surrender to you. You are worthy. You are worthy. There is nothing else that matters. Only you. Nothing else in man, only you. Only you. If you walked in with a heavy heart, only you. And if you still have a heavy heart, if you walked in preoccupied with anything but Jesus, and you're still preoccupied with anything but Jesus, let's take a moment right now and write that. There's been a number of people that have just felt there was a heaviness and a preoccupation with things other than the Lord, even unto the point of, of fear. And, and, and the Lord has set a table before us. My wife and I looked at each other and laughed when we sang the line about in the presence of my enemies, he set a table. Um, because that's so what it is. There's a buffet here and it is of agape love. And it is no coincidence, that's exactly what I'm sharing about in a few minutes. Because love casts out fear. Love displaces heaviness. So, it is very important to come out of agreement with something you've agreed with when it's not right. So just open your heart to the Lord right now. Get your body to line up with it some way. Look up, close your eyes, open your eyes, open your hands, whatever. But do something right now to cause your flesh to come in line with your soul and your soul to come in line with your spirit and agree with me. Father, I come out of agreement with fear. I come out of agreement with heaviness. I come out of agreement with discouragement, with weight, with oppression, with things of this world that have grown larger than you. And I cast my eyes upon you, Jesus. You are the beginning and end of my faith. You, Jesus, are all that I hope in, and you're all that I hope for. Say that with me. You're all that I hope in, and you're all that I hope for. Do you feel what happens? It's like, um, you know, in school, did you ever put a cork in a bowl with a needle in it, and that aligned to north on its own? I said this to a few people this morning, because that was on my heart today. If you put a little needle on a piece of cork floating in a bowl of water, it will point its way till north automatically. It's a compass. It picks up the magnetic fields of the earth. And our spirits are the same way. Now, if you've ever done that with a cork and a needle, you know that even just breathing on it a little bit can move it. It's very sensitive to outside influence, as is your spirit. Oh, we can let the wrong things breathe on it. And we can come out of alignment with the Word of God and with the Spirit of God. And when I shared the other week about one accord, that really is the idea of one accord, that we all take our hands off our own needles and we let them point towards north all on their own. Amen? Yes. So, Father, you're aligning us today. And you're building one accord within us and through us by your Spirit. Not by our might or power, but by your Spirit. So, Father, we'll take our hands off. I thank you that your yoke is easy and your burden is light and that your love casts out fear. I thank you that there will be no distraction in our hearts today, that we can align ourselves fully with you. Father, as we're bringing requests before you right now, could we all just agree? Bill O'Reilly as a man that's been around for a long time. Uh, he's an usher. He's got a blood clot in his leg today and he couldn't come. Can we just... 
Can we just bring it for him right now? He's probably watching online. So if you're watching online, agree with us too. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we say blood clot dissolve right now. Don't travel. Don't stay there. No more circulatory problems. And Bill, in the name of Jesus, flow. Blood, flow in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you have a need, just lift your hand. Let's pray. And we're going to lift it from a place of victory right now. Because, God, we know that you are already in a place where this prayer request in our lives has become a testimony. So from that place, we pray, Father God, to come through, to part Red Seas, to bring health where it's needed, providence where it's needed, holiness where it's needed. By the power of your spirit, God, we praise you. Thank you, Lord, for your presence this morning. We pray, Holy Spirit, rest on us. Stay in this place today. In your name, Jesus, amen. Can we just lift a prayer and a praise to him right now? Can we just say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Isn't it cool watching God run church? That's so easy. Oh, so good. I have something on that. Go. So this morning, so there's been this week, I've been researching the, in the Word of God where it says, be still and know that I am God, right? It's a, very, it's a very common scripture that we know. But when we look at the word be still, it actually means to surrender, which is very interesting, right? Because we think still, it means still, right? But the word still in the Hebrew actually means to surrender or to let go. Here's the even more interesting part after what we just prayed this morning. It comes from the root word of the name of God, Jehovah Rapha, who is my God who heals, right? So what that says, right, when I look at that, I see the translation, I'm going, okay. That means when I surrender, when I take the time to surrender and let him be who he is, that is where my healing comes from, right? So this morning when we release that, it's just be still, right? And no, but it's that place of surrender, whatever still and what surrender looks like to all of us, right? So yeah, I just wanted to tell you that because I thought it was so cool. We got healing and we got surrender. What? Okay. (laughs) That's so good. Wow. God, you're awesome. Today's Family Sunday. Every day in Fellowship of Believers is Family Sunday, but today that specifically means all the kids are staying in for service. Nursery is self-serve. Uh, many of the church is out camping this weekend. So high five to all of you air conditioning lovers. It is really hot out there. We normally go camping with everybody, uh, but we didn't this weekend. But we're cheat anyways. We have a camper with air conditioning and a fridge and all the things. Yeah, it's not really camping anymore. <laughs> it's not the same. It's glamping. Well, Alyssa and I tent camped for all the years before we had kids, like a couple times a year. And when, when she I was pregnant with the first, I said, we're going to keep camping, right? And she's like, yeah, if I got walls and floor and air conditioning. Yes, ma'am. You got it, darling. So yesterday we had a, a wonderful celebration of life for Barb Live. She passed away this last week. Um, it was after our Sunday service last week. So we didn't get to tell everybody. A lot of people got to make it, however, and um, it was a real blessing if you were there. That woman, my goodness, if you knew Barb Live, there's some flowers left from her uh, funeral here, her celebration of life yesterday. If you knew Barb and Jim Live, then you knew that you did not have one conversation with this woman where she did not sow seeds in your heart from the Word of God. So I would just encourage you all, take that and run with it. Flowers fade and the grass withers, but the word of the Lord stands forever. So let's build eternal things, amen? Hallelujah. She's up at the at, at, she's up in the throne room doing cartwheels right now. And that woman's smile, I've never seen a smile so warm, and it's it's way warmer right now. She's looking right in the eyes of Jesus. So I don't know if you have social media or not, some don't, but the wickers had their baby. Yeah. <laughs> they make such cute kids. Oh my gosh. With hair. There's a video on Facebook of them combing his hair. Eight pounds and a lot of ounces. I don't remember, but he's a big and he's a big boy. Corbin, Corbin Reese. 
So there's a meal train floating around. Uh, so let's go love on the Wickers with some food. Uh, if you don't know how to access that, call the office. Otherwise, it's online on social media. Um, there's also a meal train for um, for the Grotics, uh, for the health trouble that he's had. Um, and you can also get on there and, and support them a bit. Quick thing to tell you about. Doug and Domery's Heinlein are running a fantastic Spanish small group on Friday nights. Are they here today? I didn't see Doug yet. He's not here today. That's okay. So they're doing a outreach, an outreach in Amakali, which is a place in Florida if you've never been there. And it's up in the middle of the state. It's on June 11th on Saturday. They've got help. What they are wanting to do is donate clothes. They have a booth set up at a flea market where a lot of migrant workers visit. And they want to share the love of God with them and start with a practical open door. So if you've got some non-perishable food and good clothing that's not tore up, call the office. We'll get you in touch with Doug, and uh, you can donate that to them. Next week, we're really uh, excited to host a special guest from India. His name is Reverend G. King. Uh, he's, he was here at a mission conference about two or three years ago. If you remember him, this guy's a ball of energy. He's really excited about the Lord and everything that he's ha doing through him in India. So he's going to share a little bit update next Sunday. Good stuff. Very exciting. We have a couple testimonies this morning real quick. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So, Becky, where are you at? Are you, you're right up front. The lights are really bright. Can you come up and share? Do you remember we prayed for Becky and her house and all that business? None of us are going to be surprised at what you tell us. You can stay down or come up, whatever you want to do. Okay. Yeah, I can. Actually, I wasn't um, expecting to come up like this because Friday night I fell and fractured my wrist. So that was during the move, but God's good. So before I start my testimony, I want you to ask yourself, what are you waiting on? What are you waiting on? <laughs> on April 15th, I found out after I had filed my taxes then I owed because um, of two jobs I worked that I was over my limit. But um, about 15 minutes later, I got a phone call from my landlord and he said, you need to move out after living there for 20 years. And I was like, God, why? Why is this happening? And I spent hours and hours on the computer looking for a place to go and everywhere I went everything was shut down because I'm a single parent and right now you have to have three times your pay in order to get in anywhere and I was just like crying out to God and I was like why and Shane stopped me and he said mom if you really had faith in God you would start packing and I'm like Okay, if I really have faith in God, I'll start packing. And I packed one box, and I was just like, I didn't have faith because I couldn't see it. But my son seen it, and he was like, if you have faith, you'll start packing. And I still didn't have faith. And it was like everywhere I turned, the door was shut. We had a condo that we had lined up. And I went to go look at it, beautiful condo, and this guy was like, yeah, now I, now I need to check all your credit. Well, by this time, my credit had been down because everybody was checking it. So, and, I, and he told me I had it when I got there, and then he told me he needed to check my credit. And I was just like, I really didn't feel in my heart this was a place for Shane and I. And on fr Thursday, I shared with my boss, and I said, I haven't found a place yet. And she went on ahead, and she started looking right away. And come to find out, the place that she found was a cousin by my ex's, um, by marriage. And I texted them, and they were just like, yeah, come see it tomorrow. Well, I went and looked at it, and when I got there, there was three people ahead of me and one of them was a nurse and I was just like, you know, God, this probably is not going to be. 
And once again, he said, Becky, do you have faith? And I said, God, I can't see it. I can't see it. That Friday night, I just said, God, I surrender to you. I give it to you. And whatever's to be is going to be on Friday, on Saturday. I got a phone call, a text actually that said, we feel you are fit for the house. And I was like, thank you, God. And not only that, they were like, we're not going to do a credit check. And we, the deposit is only going to be a month rent plus a deposit. Wherefore, everybody else was wanting like $8,000 to get into a house. But let me back it up for a minute. On that Sunday when they prayed for me, I had no faith, none whatsoever. And one of my kids in the nursery, their parents came up and said, Becky, you're going to be taken care of. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> I was like, here I am. I'm going to be taken care of. On Monday, they reached out to me and said, you're going to be taken care of. So please have faith. Please don't worry about it. And you know, when you've been to some place 20 years and you're looking for something for your son and you, it's like, okay, I'm going to be taken care of. And on Thursday, she came and presented me with a check that helped me out because I had nothing. I wasn't ready for this. And just like now, I'm not ready for this. Friday night, I laid in bed on the floor when I fell. And I rolled on the roller is what I rolled on as I was packing. And I just laid there and I said, God, why? Why? And he said to me, why not? Why not? And I'm like, God, Adam's coming tomorrow morning. I need to finish packing. The truck's coming. And we're not ready. And I just kept on saying, God, why not? And as I was laying there, my bone was sticking out of my hand. And I was like, it just kept on swelling. And I'm like, God, I don't need this right now. I can't work, God. What am I going to do? And I yelled for Shane, and I couldn't get Shane because he had laid down just for a couple minutes to, when he fell asleep. And I literally had to crawl into the bedroom to get Shane up to take me to the hospital. And I got, I got there, of course, no doubt it's broken tomorrow or actually probably in a little bit. My hand is swelling really bad right now. So I'm gonna have to go back out to the hospital. They said I'm probably gonna have to have surgery. And again, I can't work. But God keeps on telling me why. I've got you. I've got you. I've got you. This morning when we were talking about fear in the song, God stopped me and said, I've got you. You know what? I can't see what tomorrow is. None of us can none of us can see what tomorrow is. But I ask you to look at your life and say, God, what am I waiting on? What am I waiting on? I thank you guys for your prayers. I ask that you continue to lift us up. You know, we got moved in our house thanks to Adam and Shane and actually Shane's dad <laughs> but everybody stepped up to the plate and helped and Becky had to step back and say Becky's not in control <laughs> and that's hard for me that is so hard for me to just let everybody love on me and just not be in control but I surrendered to God and I said God you are in control <laughs> and whatever tomorrow holds You've got me. So we all remember the four friends that lowered their friend through the roof. Let's lower. Grab a rope. Father God, 
we thank you and we praise you for what you've already done for Becky and Shane. And there's more yet. We thank you, Father God, that the swelling will go down in this arm and that she will be healed in the name of Jesus. Release your healing over her right now. We are all coming to you in faith, Jesus, saying, heal her. If there was a roof, we'd be cutting it open and dropping her in and posturing you, God, to come through and be who you are. So, Lord, we pray that you would not only heal her, but continue to provide. You have already done it. You've put them in a home. You put it on their hearts, the owner's heart. We feel like renting to you. We know where that feeling came from. And we praise you for it. We thank you that you are so far from done in the Schwartz home. In your name, Jesus, we speak a rest and a peace over you, Becky. You don't have to be in control. He is. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. They're so good. Hallelujah. Mike, you want to come up and share? It's really cool when testimonies just organically pop up like popcorn. It's almost like God wants to tell us stuff. How are you, friend? <laughs> Can you hear me? Thank God I didn't forget what I came up here for. Oh, <laughs> the dinner recipe? <laughs> it was back in 2009 that I first set foot in this church of ours. And um, I wasn't yet married to Lynn, but she brought me here. Anyway, as I started coming to church every Sunday with Lynn, something struck me that many of you spoke in tongues. I didn't even know what tongues were. I had to ask my wife, and uh, yes, she says she speaks in tongues as well. So I was, over the years, I just felt left out. Well, it bothered me to the point where uh, I consulted Reuben Beachy about it. He put his hand on my shoulder and said, it'll come. Well, a long time has passed and it still hadn't come. So one night when we had a, uh, during the week when we had a session here, um, Reuben and Rosemary's daughter, Rachel, she, I talked to her about it, and she says, start with ba. So I was working on that, ba, ba, ba. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> but boy, oh, boy. It, it, after the ba, ba, da, ba, da, ba da, it, it just like a dam burst open. Anyway, I thank the Lord for that and, uh, and bless you all. Oh, you know... <laughs> I've prayed with a lot of people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, and it gets made into something so much more than it is, you just don't have to force it, but you have to open your mouth because the Holy Spirit's a gentleman. You just sort of open your mouth and just let whatever's in there come out, and when you submit to the Lord in that, it will happen. It's so with ease. Jay, do you want to share your testimony that you had? No? Okay. Then we won't. Well, you told me this morning you wanted to. That's okay. <laughs> so I just think it is so cool when God confirms his word. Prayer team upstairs had verses to share with us that had all to do with today already. And there was uh, words of knowledge and understanding throughout worship that also confirmed. God is just wanting to download a fresh baptism of his love into us today. And man, is that just special. So, 
Before I dive into my word, it's going to be, I just set expectation with you, it's going to be meat and potatoes, but simple. We're going back to basics today. Is that cool? I like basics. Basics are good. I like to live on the edge of things. You notice when I talk, a lot of times I put my feet all the way out there. I like to be out on the edge sometimes, but it's just good to relay foundation. So, let's pray. Father God, we are so thankful to you for your word, which you make alive to us. We don't need to add a single thing. There's nothing to take away. Your word is so perfect. Lord, I thank you that we can just read it from beginning to end, and you can make every passage relate to us, and you can reveal more of yourself to us through your word. And I thank you, God, for the way your Holy Spirit makes it come alive and afresh and anew, how familiar portions of Scripture that we've read our whole lives can leap off the page and speak to us in a new and a fresh way. So, Holy Spirit, would you do that today? Would you make your Logos word rhema to our hearts today? If you agree with that, would you say amen? So I'm going to jump off the stage and go around the room, and I'm going to ask a few people to define. It's got scary. Everybody got really serious. Like, here he comes. <laughs> I love that. I wish you could have seen your faces. That was great. You could totally tell who's like, come talk to me, and don't come talk to me. And when you have the mic, there's this inexplicable urge to pick on the ones who are like, don't talk to me, but I won't. So prepare yourselves. I want to catch a few people's personal definitions of love. Don't give me the Sunday school. Hi, sweetie. Hi, darling. Don't give me the Sunday school definition. This is love right here. Hi, darling. Don't give me no Sunday school. Perfect. It's just exactly this or that. I'm talking about from your heart in your life, what does love look like to you? How do you practice it? Give me yours. Should I ask you for hands or should I just walk around? Should I just walk around? I'm just walking around. This is happening. It's going on. It's happening. Rick Walker. Definition of love. Um I guess looking around at my family, I mean, I, that says enough right there, you know, and my extended family. Um, what does love really look like? Well, boy, love is, love is big. Love is very big. True love. Love is forgiving. Not to be churchy. This is, this, this is love right here. <laughs> Um, love is, love is God. Love is our family or, or all of our family. I guess that's just, that's it. It's a good answer. How could you argue with that? That's awesome. It's like a minefield over here. Listen, if you're bored, just come over here. They're having a lot of fun. This is, this is the place to be. Are you coming with me? Well, we're just, it's an entourage today. Mike just told me I should ask you, Lynn. Um, I don't think that any of us, that anyone on this earth is capable of true love without first loving Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to go home because that was about most of what I had to say. That's really good. Thank you. All right. Way down the line. I'm coming for you, Chet. What's up, Chet Fader? <laughs> hey. Love, right? I, I, you know, I was going to say something. I was thinking about the answer, like you asked the question. The yeah, and I, and I really felt like I, you kind of feel like you know, but then I, I just really heard the Lord say it's the, um, it's the, it's a deep desire to always want to forgive. Ooh, yeah. so, good. so good. Okay, let's go this way, girls. I have company today. This is just happening. I'm coming to the other side. Prepare yourself, west side. Just get ready. Really? Okay. That's cool. This is all happening. Pam in the back. Back row. Go to the back. I feel it's service and caring for others. Service and caring for others. That's good. Working our way up. Working our way up. Susie? 
Hold on a minute. Love never fails. Oh, it's so good. That's so good. It's so fun. Some of y'all look at me right in the eye. Some of you looking at the ground. Hey! Never did this before. I'm not much of a talker, but my wife's laughing, see? But I just want to say, you look around here and look at the children. God said, don't touch my children. Don't touch my children. And that's, that's right. And I never understood the love of God for us until I had grandchildren. They changed. Oh. Mm. Mm, that's good. That's so good. Okay. Yeah, like one or two more. You guys got your heads on just right. <laughs> um, love conquers, uh, covers a multitude of sins. And uh, the King James Version talks about love being charity. And it's an action. It's a verb. Uh, for God so loved the world that he gave. So he walked in humility and, and love, forgiveness. That's good. One more. Okay. You just... Yeah. yeah. Amen. I just sum it up for everybody. I work as a CNA, and I have to go into a different clients' home all the time. And uh, to me, uh, when you get a diff it's all right when you have a patient that is not difficult. But when you get someone that's real difficult to love, uh, to me, is not giving up and asking God, how can you love that person? And so uh, what happened is I had a patient that w had uh, the first part of dementia, and uh, she wouldn't let me do anything for her. Uh, so uh, I told her, I said, well, if you don't let me do anything, I'm going to be out of a job. And so, you know, she didn't care. She really didn't. And so... <laughs> I got to stay. Yeah, work. yeah, it didn't it didn't work at all. And so uh she has this small bathroom, right? And God is so important to hear God when you're witnessing to people. Uh because when you don't know what to do, just say, Lord, I need your help. That, that, just say that if you don't know nothing else to say. And I, when I said that, God actually told me what to do. So I got in front of her and I looked at her and I said, You're still the boss. And when I said that word, she looked at me. I said, you are the boss, not me. I said, I'm only here to help you. And she took her arms and wrapped them around me. And then she patted me on my back and kissed me on my cheek. And I, I couldn't hold it. I just started crying right there in the bathroom. But ever since then, I have been able to take her walking to her husband, just absolutely relieved. He got a smile like my Pastor Chris <laughs> have. And, and, and can you imagine? He needed, he needed relief for his wife. And he couldn't get, she would just tag on to him. Just yeah. nobody could take him but him. Yeah. But he needed to have some time. And God put somebody as crazy as I am right in the middle of that. And I, I just want to thank <laughs> That's probably I'm going God, too far. Enough. That's who God needed was so much. I just thank him so much. I go in so many different places that's hard to love. And I be wanting to run. I'm just being honest with you. I don't, I don't want to do some of that stuff either. But guess what? If we don't love people, guess what? We ain't going to get nowhere as a Christian. Right. I, I'm just being, I'm, okay, I better give you the mic. <laughs> Edith, I'll tell you something. That's awesome. Listen, every one of us in the body of Christ is a different part. Now, I'm a man, and I like to work on things, so it's coming out like that without analogy. But think of it. Hang on a minute, Darla. I'll let you share in a sec. She wants to tell us what love is, too. You'll have a turn. Think about a big mechanics toolbox, like when, at the auto shop, okay? Big one. There's drawers after drawers after drawers after drawers. And if you're a man and you like to work on maybe a woman like to work on stuff, but it's kind of a guy thing more, this drawer's got metric sockets. That one's got standard sockets. This one's got combination wrenches. That one's got ratcheting wrenches. This one's got pliers. That drawer's got screwdrivers. God picks up just the right tool at just the right time, and he puts you in that circumstance because he needed somebody as strong and as loving as Edith. Ain't nobody else. It's you. 
And that's true for all of us. He's going to plant you in just the right places, and you got to be led by the Holy Spirit. Okay, Erin, so she says she wants to share with us about love, and then that'll be the last one. Go ahead. Your heart. That's true. Good job. We say that's the most important muscle in our body in our house, don't we, Jay? All right, you guys go sit with Mama. Thank you. That was fun. <laughs> to this one. <laughs> that's so much fun. Is it okay to have fun in church? I hope y'all didn't just come to hear one person talk. You're going to be disappointed. <clears throat> so the Lord put love on my heart to share today. We're just going to get right into the word with it. We just stand on the foundation of his perfect word to us. There's four kinds of love in the Bible. Go ahead and throw that up on the screen for me. Eros, which is like romantic love. Storgi, which is a family love. Like Rick, that's what you were talking about. And you know, the love we feel for our families is, it is amazing. That is how we're to, to begin to love each other as a body of Christ. We are one family. You know, the lives that we had their memorial here yesterday, they're not at this church anymore. Did that matter to anybody at all? No. Because we're family. There's philea, this brotherly love. And then there's agape, perfect love. And that's the love we're going to talk about today. Agape is God's love for us. It is totally unconditional. It is unselfish. These are things that people have said in here today too. It's pure. And we can only, Lynn, Torek, you really hit the nail on the head. We can only pour out of agape love when we've been filled with it. Amen. We can't do that on our own. It's supernatural. There's not one of us in this room that can love unconditionally, consistently on our own. Some of us might get a little further down that road than others on our own, but at the end of the day, we all run out of gas. Amen. And we've got to have the Lord fill us with it so we can pour it back out. 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. If you've been to a wedding, you've probably heard it. You've heard me share about this chapter many times. Top three favorite in the Bible. Because if you can get 1 Corinthians 13 right, there's not a whole lot you're going to get wrong. Amen. It's like this filter. It's this lens if you can run everything through it. <clears throat> I don't love the message translation of the Bible for everything, but boy, do I love this chapter in the message. So that's going to be on the screen. Every one of the word love in this chapter is agape. So every time this chapter says love, every time we read love in this passage, it is God's perfect love. So if I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but I don't have love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. <laughs> this whole day is like full of these mic drop moments where you could just be done. It's so good. If I speak God's word with power, you could have the most anointed, powerful message for the gospel, whether you're on a stage or at a gas station or in someone's house like Edith, and you could just be fire for the Lord. But if you don't have love, if you're revealing all the mysteries of the Lord and making all the confusing things plain as day, and if you've got the kind of faith that says, all right, mountain, up. But if you don't have love, you see, Becky, and we just family style today. <laughs> All the names are coming out. It is so okay to struggle for faith because we have people that surround us. Your son, the church body that can cut the hole in that roof. So your heart is so full of love and service for everyone around you. I don't think I have met many servants that serve as purely as you. Amen. Seriously. Amen. So the the little mustard seed of faith that we bring because it's brought in love. The Lord looks on that and says, I am pouring out a testimony into this. That's what love does. We can be right. We can do what's right. How many people like to be wrong? I don't. No one raises their hand. 
How many people like to do the wrong thing? <clears throat> Nobody. For the most part, we want to do the right things. Right. We want to do the right things. So you can be right about the thing. You can do the thing right. You can hear God correctly. Perfect. Yes. But if you don't act on these things in love, it's literally nothing. Everything we do has to be reflected of the character of God, which is love. If I give everything I own to the poor and I go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, who signs up for that on the clipboard in the family room? <laughs> if we just, you know, if you take the works-based things, and, and those aren't all works-based things, but if you... If you just do the things to say, I've done them, look what I'm doing. But you're not, you're, you're not doing it out of agape. It's nothing. You've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, no matter what I believe, no matter what I do, I am bankrupt without love. That's astounding. In this world we live in, we are told it's all about what we do. It's all about what we have to show for ourselves. You hear that I'm a self-made man, and that can apply to women too. You know, I'm, I, no one helped me get here, or look at all the things I've done. Look at all the people I've, you know, absolutely. But if it's not love, none of it is, it, it, all it does is take away. It's bankruptcy. Love never gives up. If I asked all of you, and I won't, but if we did a show of hands, for who here's wanted to give up on something really important, not one single one of us could ever say, I didn't want to give up. We've all been there. We've all been in that terrible, broken, dark place where we've said, I can't do it. Or in anger, I don't even want to. We've all been there. And yet, for most of us, and, and some of you may have, and there's no condemnation for that. Some of you have, may have given up on things that were precious and that the Lord gave you to steward. There's healing and forgiveness for it, amen? Nothing's beyond his redemption. But love, agape love, the love that fills us from above to pour out into others, can't, won't give up. That's agape love that it brings you back to that hard place. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you're with me. Even though I have no idea, some of you may say, I have no idea how my marriage is gonna work. Agape, when you're at the foot of the cross and you're refilling with the, lo the, the, the love of the Lord, you're gonna come back to that and say, I don't know how to do this with my spouse, but he is gonna fill me and make me capable. I don't know how I'm gonna get through to this customer, this client, Edith, but out of the love of the Lord, a solution appears. I don't know how I'm gonna reach my brother or my sister, my family member, my mom, my dad. Some of you guys have immediate family that are not with the Lord. I would honestly say most of us probably do. I know I have. Most of us do. And our hearts break. I was at the memorial yesterday talking to very dear friends of mine that I hadn't seen in 12 or 15 years. That one of their children, all like my age, married someone that was my best friend growing up. Like we know each other. Like since they, I was my kid's age. And I'm talking to these people. They're my parents' age. And I, I said, how so and so, my friend? And they say, not good. So we stopped and we prayed right then and there in the family room for this other man's salvation, my brother. This man is a brother to me. And not one day goes by I don't think of him. I don't know if I'm ever going to have an opportunity to be the one. But if I get it, I'm going to take it. That is a love that the Lord's given me for this person. So we struggle and we say, God, how? How can I reach my mom? She doesn't believe in you. How can I reach my son or my daughter? They don't believe in you. Man, get loud. I break this thing. The answer is at the foot of the cross where he fills you afresh with his love. Because when he fills you with it, you cannot help but pour it out when the moment presents itself. Love cares more for others 
than for self. If I had to answer this question, if I was sitting down and somebody came by me with a mic and said, what does love mean to you? My answer would be sacrifice. And it's not the kind of sacrifice that you, you hate making or that you make begrudgingly or that you make negatively. You know, fathers, you're called to sacrifice for your home and for your family. You go to work. And when you come home and your kids are kind of loud and crazy, have you met mine? You love on them and you hug on them. And mothers, you sacrifice too. You sacrifice sleep. You sacrifice, there's a dad sacrificing right now. <laughs> oh, that's not even his. Go, brother. <laughs> that's yours? That was awesome. That was love. He's taking his best friend's baby out. <laughs> that sacrifice. Go Preston. What's up, bro, man? He's not even here. Y'all tell him I said that. <laughs> See, we sacrifice as parents for our kids because we love. When you meet your children, like Lee said, I understood love when I met my grandkids. There's something that we begin to understand about the heart of God when a family builds around us in children and then generationally in grandchildren, where you would sacrifice anything. Jack and Allison Bratcher are going through it with their baby, Allura, that we've prayed through many times. They're getting clarity and answers, but it's still hard, and we're still holding out for that little girl's healing. Don't stop contending for that. But one of the things that Allison said was, I would take her place if I could in a minute. And isn't that a parent's point of view? If I could give my life or imperil it so that my child's would not be, I would do it in a second. When I think of love, I think of sacrifice. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. It's not proud. It doesn't have a swelled head. Love is not about me. It's about you. It's about the other. It's about service. You know, Memorial Day is tomorrow. And I didn't really plan this. It's just sort of happened organically by the Holy Spirit. But talking about love and sacrifice, and you think about the men and women who've given theirs for our country. You think about the men and women. You think about the families. You think about the moms raising kids alone. You think about the parents who said goodbye to sons and daughters. And there's a hole in that family forever. And the honor that they pay to that. That's love. To love is to lay your life down. Greater love has no man than this, than he that would lay his life down for his friend. Love isn't me first. Love doesn't fly off the handle. And everyone said, ouch. Ouch. Or is that just me? <laughs> love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Love covers a multitude of sins, in fact. That's not human nature, is it? It's not something we all want to admit to, but most of us have that little book in our head that says, yeah, I've forgiven this, and I've let this go, and I'm not offended but I remember what that person did. It's uncomfortable because it's true. But that's not agape love because love doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Let me ask you a question. When you go to the cross and you say, God, forgive me, what does he do with your sin? As far as from the east is from the west. And he remembers it no more. So why do we posture ourselves as better than God? Ouch. Remember I said ouch. Yeah, it hurts. Love forgets. Love doesn't enjoy when others grovel. Love takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. We could camp there for a month because truth is this incredible concept where... <laughs> When I look at this water bottle, on my side of the bottle, it said purified bottle or purified water. 
on your side of the bottle, it says a bunch of gobbledygook that you can't hardly read, like every label does. And both can be true, because while love doesn't change, I'm sorry, truth doesn't change, it's not relative, sometimes it depends on the perspective through which you look at something. What love does is turns the bottle or goes and looks at the other side to understand the other side of the point of view. Truth is this really interesting concept where it doesn't change, but it can be looked at differently. And the exposing of truth, where you look at one side or the other, or where you, you, know, you go to the other side yourself, is a selfless act of service to say, I'm totally right about what I'm seeing, but there's more on the other side. That's sacrificial love. And to say that truth flowers, you know, in a world where we basically know through the media, through most of what you'll see on a screen, the grand purpose of so much of it is to instill fear. We're being lied to on a minute to minute to minute to minute to minute basis. So much so that you forget easily that you're even being lied to. And it's not condemnation to say that. What I mean to say simply is that we're so accustomed to the smell of it, you almost stop smelling it. So then becomes this, I'm on the hunt for truth, and I've got to understand what's going on, and it can have kind of a carnal tone to it. And I want to know all the truth. I want to know what's going on. But yet, <clears throat> real truth flowers. Now stick with me on that for a minute. Flowers don't pop up overnight, do they? Flowers have to be cultivated. They have to be watered. They have to be loved on. They have to be dealt with gently, and then they grow. I'm not much of a gardener, but I have managed to not kill a few of the green things in my care. But those of you who garden, you know the satisfaction. I'm looking at Scott in the back. You garden a lot. And differently, right? You have like the indoor thing? Hydroponics. That's a big word. I don't really understand it. You tell me later. But there's nothing more satisfying than something growing from nothing to flower to fruit. Now, have you guys ever heard the expression, some people bloom later than others? Some truth blooms later than others. Stick with me. This is big. Some truth blooms later than others, and love waits. Love stands in the gap between what isn't and what will be. And love doesn't say, that flower that I'm waiting on better look exactly like this or else. Because some people don't flower the same way. Some people are shrubs. <laughs> some people look totally different, and that's okay. We are all made in the image of God. So if there is truth that you are looking for and you are trying to uncover in your life or in a relationship, I would encourage you to let the Holy Spirit lead you in it. Because what will come from that is love. Love puts up with anything. Wow. And you're like, Chris, even that one person? Yep. Even that. Even the person on I-75 that goes 64 in the left lane? Yep. You want to know how to improve your driving? Put a bumper sticker on your car that says you go to church or that you love the Lord. You're going to remember it's there. I hope. Love trusts God always, always looks for the best. Love never looks back. It's looking forward. And it keeps going to the end. Amen? Amen? Love never dies. Inspired speech will stop someday. Praying in tongues, as wonderful as it is, we're not going to need it in heaven. Because understanding, it says we'll have reached its limit, but we'll have the fullness there. We only know a portion of the truth now, and what we say about God is going to be incomplete at this point, because we're not with Him completely. But when the complete arrives... Our incompleteness is canceled. That's the kind of cancel culture I can get behind. That's good. Skipping to 13. For right now, until that completeness, 
we have three things to do to lead us towards that. We trust steadily in God. We hope unswervingly. I love the determination in that word. And we love extravagantly. And the best of the three is love. In John 13, this is all agape again. John chapter 13, let me give you a new command. Jesus' words, agape, in perfect love. Again, we have to be full of this from the Lord to pour it out. Love one another. In the same way, Jesus' words, in the same way Jesus loved us, you love each other. That's a tall order. Y'all, just stop and let that land for a minute. Do you, do you think that this was only true before Jesus died? Do you think that he put an expiration on that? He knew he was going to the cross. And he tells us to love each other the same way I've loved you. That sets the bar pretty high. We are called, literally, church, as believers, to lay our lives down for each other. Y'all, God help us. That's amazing. Why? Because this is how everyone will recognize that you're my disciples. When they see the love you have for each other. What good is it to run around with the Christian bumper sticker and yell, I'm a Christian? What good is it to witness? What good is it to do all these things if we can't love each other? It's astounding. It's such a, such a simple tool. I was talking um, to Yvonne and Miles before service, and we were talking about how when we, when we share the love of God with, with other people that don't know Him yet specifically, it's never done in broadcast. It's always done in community and in relationship. You see, as much as I might interact with you right now, this is more of a broadcast. We're not having a conversation specifically. Whereas in a conversation, it's back, it's forth, it's back, it's forth. I say something, you're affected by it. So you say something, I'm affected by it, and I respond. And back. That's, that's community and relationship and conversation. That is the place where the Lord's love can be made real to people. I'll share one more verse with you. Philippians 2. If you have gotten anything, I love how this says it. <laughs> if you've gotten anything at all out of following Christ, if God's love has made any difference at all in your life, if being in community of the Spirit, this is a community of the Spirit of God. You follow me? If being in community with other believers has meant anything to you, if you have a heart, we all got roped in there, if you care, then do me a favor, agree with each other, love each other, be deep-spirited friends, don't push your way to the front, don't sweet-talk your way to the top, put yourself aside, and don't help others get ahead, don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage, Forget yourself long enough to lend a helping hand. Whew. Boy, that's good. We have to agree with each other, find common ground and celebrate it, rally around on it, stand on it. We love each other, agape love, again, because we're so full of it, we pour it out. And it's not just to be all full here, right? We know it's to go out from this place. We're to be deep-spirited friends. I may not be deep-spirited friends with every one of you, but I am with some of you. Now, if you do not have a deep-spirited friend in this room, and including the ones who just went camping, <laughs> there's a bunch. If you don't have deep-spirited friends in this church, in the Word of God, I didn't pull this verse out ahead of time, so I don't know where it's found. But if you want to be a good friend, if you want to have a good friend, you have to be a good friend. It's in Proverbs. I've talked to so many people that say, Chris, this church is amazing, but I just don't have friends. Well, man, in love, my response is, what are you doing about it? Today is an awesome day to start that. If you don't have deep-spirited friendship in this church, Find somebody that you've said hello to two or three times, which I guarantee has happened because this church says hello better than anywhere I've ever been in my life. 
and say, it's really complicated. Are you ready? Take notes. Would you like to go have lunch with me? I know that's kind of scary. Some of you in high school excelled better at asking people out on dates than others. I know it's kind of nervous. Okay? I'm not talking about literally dating, but there's a parallel here. There's the butterflies. What if they say no? Then ask them next week or ask somebody else. They probably just have plans or something. It's not a big deal. Hi, sweetie. What you doing? Can you go sit with your mama? Thank you. So if you don't have deep-spirited friends, take matters into your own hands and ask someone to lunch or say, would you like to come over to my house today? We can form community so easily. That's all it takes. The next thing, the next action in this Philippians 2 verse we're told is to step aside. And what that literally is to say is serve one another. It is so gratifying. When I think of servants in this church, we're just calling everybody out today by name. So here it comes some more. Kenny and Heather Dotson, you guys are such pure servants. Amen. As long as I have ever known you, even from when you were serving in youth group while I was a teenager in youth group, which was a long time ago, 20, 25 years. You all serve. And just the other week, you're like, I hear that you said, I'm not doing enough, I need to do more, which is like lunacy, because you do so much. But that's a heart of service. It is so gratifying when we serve, because now I'm putting me aside, I'm putting myself aside, and I'm saying, how can I fill the void here? And what can I do? And when you do that, you forget about yourself, Edith. That's exactly right. Just like it says in Philippians. Now suddenly it's not about you, it's about something else. I was talking to somebody a week ago, and they gave me a, a, a definition of depression that I've never heard. That depression is a purely inward focus. And when you only think about yourself... And it sounds vain and selfish, but what, it, it, that's not really the root necessarily. What happens is when you only think about yourself and you're not serving outside of yourself, all you have to think about are the negative things happening in you. I'll tell you what, you start serving somebody and you're going to forget about all the stuff that's bothering you. And all of a sudden, you're celebrating victories on someone else's behalf. Right. Amen? Amen? Find ways to serve. So I told you, today was meat, potatoes, and back to the basics. So what I want to do now is commit it to prayer. Will you all join me? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to leave you in the hands of God to go study this and let the Lord continue to fill you with his love. Amen. So Father God, right now, as we go from this place today, I pray that as we each go and we read 1 Corinthians 13 ourselves, and as we read Philippians 2 ourselves, you will make real to us where we are succeeding to your glory and where we still have yet opportunities for you to show yourself mighty in our lives. Because we all have both. Father, I pray that you would baptize each of us afresh in your agape love. And not just a love to make things feel better, Father, but a love to actually affect change, not only in our life, but all the people we encounter. We're not here just to feel good. We're not here to just have an encounter with you and keep it. We're here, Father, to be filled up by you. And we go to our secret place, Father, to be filled up and healed by you so that we can go and pour out of that into those we encounter. We know, Father, that the ones we encounter are divine appointments from you. We each have callings and purposes on our life where we are called to pour out your agape love. It is the single greatest tool we have to show you to the world. So, Father, as we go to this place, as we go to live our lives, we pray, Father, that your agape love would fill us anew, that you would show us where we lack in it, and that there would be no condemnation, no fear, and no shame in that place because you're greater than every one of our shortcomings. We thank you, Lord, that your love would displace every ounce of fear in each of us, that fellowship of believers could be known as a family of love. 
that anyone could come to this place and be changed by the power of your love expressed through us. And that as we go, the power of your love expressed through us would literally make us shining beacons of your presence in this world because we know it is so needed. So, Father, I thank you for your presence with us today. We commit your word to our hearts. If you agree to commit your, the, the Lord's word to your hearts, I want you to just say, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I love you, church. You're an awesome family. We'll see you next week.